Support for Iowa Catholic Radio and Be Not Afraid comes from Ball Team, your builder of all faith-based construction needs. Learn more at buildwithball.com. Now, hear the good news and be not afraid. Good morning. Welcome to Be Not Afraid, Iowa Catholic Radio. Father PJ, good morning. Good morning, Father. Let us begin in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the Virgin Martyr Saint Agatha implore your compassion for us, O Lord, we pray. For she found favor with your by the courage of her martyrdom and the merit of her chastity. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The church celebrates the memorial of St. Agatha, Father, died 250, who died in defense of her purity in Catania, Sicily, after Quantimus, the governor of Sicily, tried in vain to force her to consent to sin. She was imprisoned for a month with an evil woman. He then turned from sensuality to cruelty and had her rest gruff. But that night, Agatha was healed by St. Peter. She was then rolled over sharp stones and burning coals, and finally taken to prison, where she died while praying. Her name appears in the Roman canon. Such interesting stories, you know. So St. Agatha um, uh, has been invoked uh, for years, but especially in more recent years, because... Uh, awareness and advances, advances in medical technology um, for people struggling with breast cancer. Oh, um, so wow. be, because of the nature of her death, she's a, she's a great patron for, 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 for women and men, but, uh, but especially women who, 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 who wind up struggling with breast cancer. Um, uh, I have a, uh, I have a particular affection for St. Agatha because she, um, she was involved in the, the greatest liturgical tongue slip I've ever had. Um, it was Christmas several years ago. Deacon Tony in the other room was there, and uh, as you said, her name appears in the Roman Canon. The Canon's the the longest of the Eucharistic prayers. It's also the oldest complete one that we have, um, and it's the one our listeners will recognize it because it's the one with all the saints. The two lists of twelve saints, the two the two lists of saints at the front and the back end of the prayer, and in the back end of the prayer, Agatha is one of the saints that gets listed. Well, it was Christmas Day, and I'd said like six masses or something, and I was very okay. tired, and so I was going through the list from memory. Um, and it's supposed to be Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia. Oh, yeah. But what I said was Agatha Christie, Agnes, <laughs> Cecilia. Oh, my gosh. That order. So I, so I, ca- so I canonized the mystery author. Um, <laughs> no, horror. W- w- which, horror is w- 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 which, which, which is funny because she actually, so the actual Agatha Christie was deeply involved in, uh, in preserving the Latin mass in England. Um, wow. so, so there was there, 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 that, there was a that, kind of a funny connection there, but 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 they still tease me about it whenever I use the canon. And say, is Agatha Christie going to show up at mass tonight? <laughs> it's it's very um, interesting biography from Saint Agatha with Saint Lucy mm-hmm. as well. No, both are the, the ambassador of chastity and purity virgins as well. You know, they're they're these they're these great virgin martyrs from uh, from the early days. You know, and this is a whole category of saints in the early life of the church, and. Um, while we might be tempted today to think that this is a, an undue focus on material chastity or on like physicality, what this is really about is single mindedness, single heartedness. These women knew how to give themselves wholly, entirely to something, and it, that was worth that it, was worth keeping and fighting for. Right. It's very it's very common with this kind of uh, flesh, sinfulness condition how deeply must be the sacrifice and suffering as well to remove that kind of, I mean, losing soul, you know. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So it's a comparable with a diff- uh, another mortal sins. Obviously, all of those mortal sins uh, conquer ourselves to go to the health, may I say that. But at the same time, this chastity, it's more violent battle, violent battle, in mind, in body, and senses to avoid those kind of occasions that make you miserable, a slave of lust. The, uh, the, uh, 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 a line that I've uh, come up with for use in the confessional that, I, that I, people seem to find useful here, right, is that um, we get hungry to remind ourselves to, to eat because Correct. it's possible to 
get busy and, and distracted and, and you forget to eat. And then, and, then, and then when you do need to eat, you're like really hungry, kind of uncontrollably hungry. And if you wait too long, sometimes it's hard to control yourself when you do eat. You can wind up with a belly ache, right? Correct. Well, we get horny. We, you know, we, we, we find ourselves attracted to other people. To remind ourselves to connect, it serves the same basic function. But just as we need to temper our, our intake of food, so we need to temper our relationships with other people, not only our sexual relationships, but all of our relationships with other people. And so when a person feels tempted against chastity, uh, I, I find, uh, of course, a general life of self-discipline, work like constant fasting to learn to overcome just your own impulses is important. But I find an outlet to, um, to, so that a person can connect with other people to be the most effective, because that's what your that's what your body's really correct, after. Correct. It's not it's 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 not sex. It's it's connection, and and that's what and that's what most people need today. And it's very interesting how you say that, Father. Also, I remember one of my spiritual directors that recommend. Obviously, somebody will be in disagree with that. That obviously is understandable. Is avoid meat, red meats. Mm. That in a different kind of, uh, not necessarily vegetarian uh, diet, but like a chicken or fish, keep you, is, may I say, in low, yeah, no, <laughs> no, 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 slow no. down and more in self control versus that uh, bloody, bloody meat as well. This know? is, no, this, this is, this is very ancient advice. This was, this was the council of the church fathers. Oh, okay. So, so, okay. so the desert fathers were universal in this. And it's the reason most religious communities were at least quasi vegetarian. Um, they don't, eat, they'd only eat meat at certain times of the year and on like feast days and that kind of thing. Uh, b- because it's not only, it, it, it's not only about sort of red meat the way we think of it now, though that's, that's part of it. They were also concerned with overly spicy foods, anything that would, um, Sort of excite the passions. Exactly. Get you to get you too riled up in any direction. And that's the reason I think when people are struggling with chastity, this is so significant. We think that this is like a super special sin with a super special set of uh, conditions or something. And, and really, this is not that different than most other parts of our lives. Uh, the, 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 the physiological response that we're reacting to when we're attempting to keep ourselves chaste, which can be a challenge, is really not that different than the physiological response that happens when you're about to get into a fight or when you're scared and you need to run away. Correct. Um, and, and so what happens is, right, your your body tenses up and it creates new energy that needs to be expelled. And and in the ordinary course of things, that might be by running away or it might be by getting in a fight or it might be by running around the block or it might be by doing something mm-hmm. for somebody else. Wow. So like one of the things I do is I keep a little little stack of just blank greeting cards next to my bed and I will I will write a greeting card like to a to a homebound parishioner because it takes the energy that's inside me that wants to get out and it gets it out of me but in a good and a healthy way. Wow. And also obviously fasting. Mm-hmm. Constant. E- even that we are not in Lent or we are not in Advent, but fasting is also a an, an a grave uh, remedy an alternative to find this battle in more victorious way. The most, I'm. This is probably hyperbolic, and I'll have to walk it back. But I, I, I it, it's so close to true that I want to say it. I think the most destructive idea that that got into the church in the last fifty years is the notion that fasting only belongs to Lent. I, I think it was the single, the single most destructive idea to Christian piety, um, and 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 I would maintain it's actually the biggest rupture in terms of traditional practice. Um, nobody, n- not a single person in Christian history ever believed that fasting only belonged in Lent until like 1972 or something. Like they just, it was, it was totally unthinkable. The reason Lent was a big deal was because you were fasting for all of it, <laughs> but, 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 but the rest of the year, it would be like two days a week. But it, so, so the, so, 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 y- but it presumed constant penance, like, you're not just sinning six weeks of the year. You're sinning all the time. Absolutely. So absolutely. Why, why would you think that the remedy for sin is you're only going to apply six weeks out of the year and then you're going to get better the other 40, 48? It doesn't make any sense, right? The 46, it doesn't make any sense. So, 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 so like we, we all, all of us need to be exercising significant self-discipline in food, in drink, and in other bodily pleasures all the time, all the time. 
there are times to feast, and, 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 and that is a good and a holy thing to do in context, but the, you, you can only tell the feast because of the fast. Yeah. And, Father, also one of the invitations is to grow in self-control. Mm-hmm. But if I did not train in myself to be in control only, only six weeks per year, so what happened the rest of the year? I'm continuing to be susceptible to fill down in sin, in mortal sins. You know, it's 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 just like the gym. If you only go to the gym once a year, then you're only ever going to be able to lift as much as you can that one day. But if you but if you go constantly, if you're consistent in your use, and if you you know vary patterns and all the things that you do to keep yourself healthy, then you'll become physically stronger. Well, if you want your soul strong, you got to go to mass a lot and you got to go to confession a lot. It's that simple. Ancient word to say discipline. Discipline. Iowa Catil Radio, be not afraid. Fast Signs is a custom sign and visual solutions company with an extensive selection of digital signage, interior and exterior signs, banners, and vehicle wraps. Learn more at fastsigns.com. Thank you, Fast Signs in Clive, for your support of Iowa Catholic Radio. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio is provided by Catholic Charities of the Diocese of Des Moines, where empowering individuals and strengthening families have been the cornerstone of care for a century. Services for neighbors in need include a food pantry, professional counseling, emergency family shelter, and refugee resettlement. At Catholic Charities, lives are transformed and you can be part of the mission. To learn more about how to help Catholic Charities fulfill Christ's promise of help and hope, visit catholiccharitiesdm.org. Like Iowa Catholic Radio on Facebook. Iowa Catholic Radio would like to thank our business partner, Edible Arrangements, for their support, offering fruit bouquets and gourmet dip chocolate treats. On the go or have it delivered for that special occasion, ediblearrangements.com. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio is provided by Ashworth Vision Clinic. Complete eye exams, contact lenses, glasses, glaucoma testing, and urgent eye issues. 515-440-4610, ashworthvision.com. Help connect listeners to Christ. Tell a friend about Iowa Catholic Radio. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio and Be Not Afraid comes from Ball Team, your builder of all faith-based construction needs. Learn more at buildwithball.com. Now, hear the good news and be not afraid. Welcome back to Be Not Afraid, Iowa Catholic Radio. Jubilee is a very interesting word and now the, the Holy See has been proclaimed, or better to set an extending an invitation for the Universal Catholic Church to be in prayer. But what happened with the word Jubilee? What is the meaning of that word? So the, the custom of Jubilee, uh, the practice of the Jubilee, goes all the way back to the beginnings of the Old Testament. Okay. Um, and, it's, and, it's, and it's deeply related to, uh, to our custom of Sabbath. Okay. So, so the very word Sabbath, uh, the, the word sabado in Spanish, right? Correct. Um, uh, it, it, like it, it just means the seventh day, right? So the, 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 that day. And the, and the reason it was important, uh, uh, this is very difficult for most people today to wrap their heads around, but like w- we kind of invented the week. Okay. Like the whole notion that there was a portion of the week that was for work and a portion of the week that was for rest really is derived from the biblical tradition here. And so God uh, insisting or commanding a day of rest, so a day that you couldn't force other people to work, is uh, it, is at the heart of Jewish identity, right? And, and all those disputes in the time of Jesus about what counts as violating the Sabbath and not violating the Sabbath are ultimately, like, whether, whether pulling your ox out of the well does or doesn't constitute a violation of the Sabbath, what both sides presume there is, the Sabbath matters. Like God has commanded rest. Well, the Jubilee is the Sabbath of Sabbaths. It's the seventh seventh. So it, so 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 there's 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 uh, seven days in a week, right? And the seventh day is the day of rest. Seven times seven is forty nine, and so the the first of the next is fifty, um, and and that's the year of Jubilee. So a Jubilee is is the fiftieth year. Um, uh, and, 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 the, and the Jews kept this practice because during the Sabbath years, that is the seventh years, um, you would let uh, fields go fallow. You wouldn't, you wouldn't harvest from them. Um, and, and tithes would change and gifts to the poor and the widows would change. 
Well, the same thing uh, sort of is, 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 is true on a yearly basis. So you do this on the seventh year for seven, seven terms, and then on the eighth year, everything's off. It's almost like a year's vacation. It's a, it's, it's, it, it, it's a time uh, dedicated wholly to celebration, God's bounty, to rest, and to worship. And may I ask you, any special indulgences provide for the Holy See with a particular practices that we can enlighten our audience about it? So I'm certain that there will be. So the Holy Father just announced this new Jubilee year uh, the other day. Um, and we're actually re- we're recording this, friends, um, a little bit ahead of time. So um, the packet with the indulgences and the prayers it doesn't come out till tomorrow. <laughs> this is the day after we're recording this. They will be available. Like if you jump online right now as you're listening to me say this and Google, you know, Jubilee year, you'll get all the things that you need. But what I can tell you, uh, like in general about this, right, is is uh, the Holy Father attaches uh, uh, indulgences to um, a great number of these uh, of these pious practices. And then bishops on the local level wind up being able to attach indulgences uh, in visits to particular churches. And so I am morally certain that Bishop Johnson will be establishing places that we can visit here in Des Moines um, uh, in order to celebrate this Jubilee year, which is going to be dedicated in a special way to prayer, to the role of prayer in the life of the church and in the life of the individual Christian faithful. That is uh, a great opportunity also for uh, conversion. And we are not far away from Lent itself. So also it's a good way to go and follow up the invitation from the Holy See. And also remember that sacrament of reconciliation, to reconcile yourself with God especially through this opportunity for the church as well. So we have also memory from JP2 in the past about this amazing experience about the Jubilee, right? So so Jubilee's, uh, the, the practice of Jubilee is drawn from this 50-year tradition with, with the Jews. Um, over time, it became common to, the Pope can appoint extraordinary, extraordinary Jubilees which is what this one would be. So this is really a 25-year jubilee rather than a 51. Okay. Because okay. we're in 2024 going into 2025, right? So that's where this is coming from. So the last big one in Rome was in 2000. Now, there were regularly scheduled, that the last regularly scheduled jubilee. There were special ones with the year of mercy. Um, uh, but but this one, uh, th- this one's special to me because I was in Rome for the last regular Jubilee. How was that? Um, it was amazing. Uh, I was 17, um, and uh, oh, and I, I I got it was my first time out of the country, and I got to see the world, and it was, and I got to see John Paul II. Um, it had a deep <sighs> impact on my on my future vocation. Um, uh, uh, I'll never forget. He spoke to us the first night we were gathered in St. Peter's Square. The holy doors were open so people could pass through for the Jubilee. Um, and uh, we, we did Vespers, and they um, they sang the Our Father, and, and we were staying a ways out of the city. And so the people in charge from here, um, they had us all hold hands, and they said, as soon as the prayer is done, run, because we have to get to the train. And so we turn to go, and we hear the Pope say, good night, in English. And he'd been speaking in Italian up until then, so we all looked up. And he started saying good night. He must have said good night in 15, 20 different languages. Um, but it was but it was like he'd seen us sneaking out early and stopped to nice. to, 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 to surprise us. Um, no, very formative experiences. And so, you know, I, I'd especially recommend any of our, our listeners that are planning on a pilgrimage to Rome in the next year. Like you're you're in a very privileged place. Make good use of the time and the and, and the space and the graces that the church provides. Sometimes we we need that kind of door opens for our lives. Mm-hmm. And especially the Holy Mother, the church, always open those doors for special circumstances in the life. And the current time around the world has been a lot of uh, violence and very disappointing experiences of love, charity, and compassion. And I think this is a great opportunity for us to approach that welcoming spiritual mm-hmm. <laughs> opportunity from from the church can look and feel quite different. Yeah. I, I, I think you're, you're right with that father. It's also worth our reflecting on, you know, probably the, the practice um, that comes closest to Jubilee that most of us are familiar with is just the keeping of regular anniversaries. So like the way we keep wedding anniversaries and one of the big ones, right? Well, 25 and 50, 
right? And so, um, and this is drawn from that same tradition that that it is important for us as human beings, even as you say, Father, in the midst of very difficult times, it's important to take time to pause, to give thanks, and to celebrate. Sometimes celebrations in the worst of times are far more meaningful than the 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 better celebrations that you're able to provide in the better times. Iowa Catholic Radio, be not afraid. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio comes from Deary of Ames, home of warranty forever, offering new, used, and commercial vehicles as well as service and Mopar parts. Deary of Ames is located just off of Highway 30 at the Dayton Avenue exit and online at DearyAmes.com. Thank you to our business partner, Big Red Q Quick Print. Family owned and operated since 1980, Big Red Q Quick Print is a full service print shop ready to help you with all your printing needs with speed and accuracy. Big Red Q Des Moines.com. Big Red Q Des Moines.com. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio is provided by Intervisions Healthcare, empowering men and women to make the most informed, life affirming decisions for themselves and their families. Learn more at IVHcare.org. IVHcare.org. Thank you, Intervisions Healthcare, for supporting Iowa Catholic Radio. Support for programming comes from Golden Rule Plumbing, Heating, Cooling, and Electrical, offering repairs, installations, and maintenance for the whole house, including heating and cooling systems and all things plumbing and electrical. Learn more at GoldenRulePHC.com. Dad, how are things going in St. Vincent de Paul? Awesome, Zoe. Our 6th Avenue Army Post Road and Windsor Heights locations are really busy. Steve Haveman, Executive Director of St. Vincent de Paul, thanking you for your continued support. How can people help St. Vincent de Paul, Dad? By donating and shopping. St. Vincent de Paul helps everyone, even kids' lives. <laughs> yes, Zoe, even kids' lives. Thanks for shopping at our St. Vincent de Paul thrift stores. St. Vincent de Paul! Support for Iowa Catholic Radio and Be Not Afraid comes from Ball Team, your builder of all faith-based construction needs. Learn more at buildwithball.com. Now, hear the good news and be not afraid. Welcome back to Be Not Afraid, Iowa Catholic Radio. Father, we approach the sixth Sunday in Ordinary Time, and I want to propose to you that in this time, let us explore the psalm for this uh, liturgy of the word. The Psalm 32, mm-hmm. verses 1, 2, 5, and 11. You know, before we hit the text of the psalm itself, I Go think ahead. it might be useful to say something about psalms and the, and please, the, and the way they, they, they interact in the liturgy. So the, 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 the first thing uh, to understand here is that the responsorial psalm is not called this because of the way that we say it, I think most people think that the reason that the responsorial psalm is called the responsorial because we re, because we respond. The cantor, the the reader says the thing and we repeat back and that sort of thing. That's not the sense in which the responsorial is given here. It's responsorial because it's responding to the text that precedes it. Oh, okay. So the so the responsorial psalm is situated between the first reading and either the second reading or gospel. Because it's a response to the first reading. Okay. So God speaks to us in the first reading, and then we respond back to God. Bracing him. With his words, right? Wow. So, 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 and, 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 and one of the things that I think most of our listeners, and this is, friends, don't feel badly about this. I was a priest several years before I probably experienced mass the way it was really designed. Um, uh, what we're most accustomed to in this part of the country with the kind of for him sandwich that happens uh, at mass is not the way the mass is set up. That's an exception to the rule. So every time you hear a song sung at mass, what, what the church like in a perfect world really has in mind here is a Psalm to be sung at mass. And there's a whole separate book with the Psalms, but because of the melodies that are involved, people often skip them. The reason this is important though, is because every time there's a major movement in the liturgy, the, the the theoretical response of the people is psalm. And the psalms are inspired songs. They, they are songs. This isn't a knock on singing, but they're inspired songs. That is songs inspired by the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament. Um, the psalms are, are typically attributed to David. He certainly didn't write all of them, especially since he talks about himself in some of them. But uh, psalm 32 belongs to a special class or category of psalms, which are very important, especially as we look towards Great Lent the penitential psalms. So there are seven psalms 
that are especially penitential in character. And the church gives us this one, this last weekend before Lent, to kind of situate our hearts so that we're in the right disposition moving in. And so that being said. So the responsorial said, I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. Wow. It's eloquent. It's beautiful, right? Um, now, you'll notice, uh, so this is the actual responsorial. This is the part that we would say back, right? I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. The, 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 the Psalms have a structure that's, that's similar across all of them. So they're, they're songs that are written with a particular kind of form. And the response that we sing typically has sort of two phrases or two strophes that would ordinarily be sung kind of in a back and forth. To uh, navigate. Way, right. And so here, the first half would be, I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble. So that's sort of our position. And you fill me with the joy of salvation. So I do this, you do that. I do this, you do that. And then the verses explain what happens when he does that. Blessed is, the, blessed is he whose fault is taken away, whose sin is covered. Bless the man to whom the Lord imputes not guilty, in whose spirit there is no guile. So, so Hebrew um, makes greater use of the passive voice than, uh, than English typically does. Um, so, so, so this phrase, blessed are you or blessed is, um, uh, is, is passive, right? So you're saying that this other person is blessed. You're not blessing them. Um, uh, and, um, and, and, and it loves these doublets. Blessed is the one who does this and that. The man who does this and that is really, really good. Um, so so, so, so it, it's predicated on repetition. And, and like a good poem, you change the words just slightly to drive your point home. So blessed the man whose fault is taken away, whose sin is covered. Blessed the man to whom the Lord imputes not guilt, in whose spirit there is no guile. Blessed is the guy who does what he's supposed to and who says he's sorry when he messes it up. Then I acknowledge my sin to you. My guilt I covered not. I said, I confess my faults to the Lord. And you took away the guilt of my sin. Wow. So the, so the author here, right, is, is struggling with the fact of sin. And very often the nature of sin is we commit them and other people don't know about them or they don't know that we're the one who did it. Mm -hmm. And so then we have to deal with the question of guilt. How many of us like, like to say this? Uh, well, I, I told God I was sorry. I don't need to talk to nobody else about it. Well, I, 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 the psalmist, I confess my, my, my sins just with that. Just with not, God. No one. So, 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 so the psalmist respectfully disagrees. He doesn't think that's good <laughs> enough. Um, and, and he shows you why. Um, I, I can't cover my guilt. Like if I do that, I'm I sort can't. of faking myself. Um, instead, I confess my faults. And because I confess them, you, O oh Lord, took the guilt away. So I can't take my guilt away on my own. I need God. to. The do only that way one. is I need God in my life. You know, be glad in the Lord and rejoice. You just exalt all you, O oh pride of heart. So again, th this is very deliberate. So, so the Psalms, especially in most contemporary English translations, typically have four kind of verses each phrase. Sometimes the psalmist will deliberately shorten one of those phrases to drive home a point, and that's what's going on here at the end. So we've had this predictable pattern. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. And when you stop on the two, it becomes clear that the, the two is, is, is the point that you were trying to drive home all along. And so what is that? The, the conclusion of, of, of the psalmist's prayer, be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you just, you're the ones that are doing that you're, what you're supposed to, exalt all you who are upright of heart. So, 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 so this is a way of sort of sideways telling people how to be by praising God. You tell, you tell the people how to behave by praising God for the way things ought to be. Father, we are approaching our ending program. Could you please send us with your blessing? Sure, sure. May the peace and the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Be not afraid. Iowa Catholic Radio. Be not afraid. Jesus is on the way to encounter you. Go forward and be not afraid. 
Support for Iowa Catholic Radio and Be Not Afraid comes from Ball Team, your builder of all faith-based construction needs. Learn more at buildwithball.com. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio comes from John Leonetti, EOS Implementer, the entrepreneurial operating system, helping businesses and organizations clarify, simplify, and achieve their vision. John.Leonetti at EOSWorldwide.com. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio comes from the Catholic Tuition Organization. Reduce or eliminate your Iowa income tax and instead give to the Catholic Tuition Organization and receive 75% Iowa tax credits. These tax credits are going fast, so reserve yours today and learn more about the Catholic Tuition Organization at ctoiowa.org. ctoiowa.org. The bottom line, it's for the kids and their futures. Catholic Tuition Organization, a great investment in our kids. Support for programming is provided by Construction Professionals, serving customers through a proven process creating unique design, functionality, and artistic beauty. Construction Professionals is a Catholic family business built on a strong foundation. cpcustomhomes.com. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio is provided by the Sarah Vocations Ministry, including the St. Sarah Club of Des Moines and the Sarah Club of Council Bluffs. Sarah is an apostolate of the Worldwide Catholic Church dedicated to fostering and supporting priesthood and religious vocations. Sarans strive to accomplish their mission through prayer, fellowship, and service to the bishop, priests, sisters, and all in religious formation, and in doing so to increase their own holiness. Learn more at joinsara.org, join S-E-R-R-A dot org. Thank you, Sarans, for your support of Iowa Catholic Radio. Like Iowa Catholic Radio on Facebook. Here's your forecast on Iowa Catholic Radio. Central Iowa will see partly sunny skies today with a high near 51. Partly cloudy overnight, a low around 30. Then mostly sunny Tuesday, a bit warmer with a high in the mid-50s. Today's forecast brought to you by Caldwell Parish Funeral Home and Crematory, a Catholic-owned and operated funeral home with locations in Urbandale, Adel, Perry, and Winterset. CaldwellParish.com. And that's your forecast on the Iowa Catholic Radio Network, connecting listeners to Christ. Listener-supported Iowa Catholic Radio, 1150 AM KWKY, Des Moines, 94.5 FM K233BT, Des Moines, 88.5 FM KIHS, Adel, online anytime at iowacatholicradio.com. Pray 